Remember how we talked about separating truth from falsehood with claims of truth? There are many ways that we could try to find out how the world works. Why do people act the way that they do? Now we could appeal to authority and ask somebody who's really smart, like Aristotle. And then we have a scholastic system built on revealed truth. Or we could ask a celebrity. <laughs> Don't laugh, that stuff sells big time. Now some people claim to have a magic book that unveils mysterious truths about the world and the future. But the most reliable and verifiable way to understand the world around us is the method of science. We call it the scientific method, and its beauty is that anyone can do it. Everyone can understand it. And properly done, what we learn from the scientific method teaches us something important about reality. Scientific research is done in a variety of settings and with a variety of techniques. In its purest form, scientific research uses laboratory experiments, such as with biological specimens, tissue samples, or slides, or using laboratory rats, the stereotypical lab rats. Scientists also use computational research, in which they create computer models. This is the realm of big data and data science. It uses algorithms to make predictions based upon massive data sets. When you watch the weather forecast and learn that it will rain at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, you are watching computational science at work. Other researchers use qualitative approaches to understanding the world. They talk to people in focus groups or conduct interviews. They study written documents, audio and video archives, or internet social media transcripts. Qualitative researchers use open-ended surveys in which they gather rich data about the lived experience of human beings. Other researchers, like me, and now you, do quantitative study. We use numeric files, validated surveys, to quantify and better understand human behavior. The validated surveys allow us to use comparable measurements across multiple studies. Sometimes we use archival data that have been previously collected, and we re-examine those numbers using more complex statistical research models. Each of these are ways of studying reality, and they all contribute to our overall understanding of the world. I mentioned research models as part of quantitative scientific research. Following the observation of Kurt Levine, the founding father of social psychology, that there's nothing so practical as a good theory. We create models of reality in science and then collect data to test our models. We continue to refine those models in response to what we learn from reality. And there's nothing so real as a good model. This is something that I learned from Dr. Todd Little at StatsCamp. You know, it's true, there really is a super nerdy summer camp called Stats Camp, where statisticians go to learn about stats. Been there twice myself already. Anyway, Todd Little said that good research models depict reality. And depict was an acronym. Using the scientific method to model reality allows us to describe behavior transparently and systematically so that we are clear about what we study. Explain the forces that give rise to behaviors so that we can predict when and under what conditions behaviors will occur in the future. Improve quality of life by the use of knowledge because the more that you eat from that tree of knowledge, the better. Change behavior. Perhaps change unwanted behaviors or maybe reinforce wanted behaviors. And finally, test all of the above. We could begin by looking at the scientific method in practice. In this section, you can find a link to the roadkill experiment in which researcher Mark Rober tested whether cars were more likely to hit turtles or snakes. He used a rubber turtle, a rubber snake, a rubber tarantula, and a leaf in his experiment. 
The video is both entertaining and a little bit disturbing to know that there are a small number of sociopaths on our roadways who will go out of their way to run over turtles, even if they are rubber. As you watch the video, try to identify the independent variables, the dependent variable, experimental group, and control group. The purpose of research is to draw conclusions about a larger group of individuals based on what we've learned from a smaller group of individuals. When we compare our conclusions to those of other researchers investigating similar problems, we learn about the world around us. We apply our creativity with scientific rigor in order to make sense of reality. So I want to leave you with a poem by Rudyard Kipling that makes this point very clearly. It is from the story, Elephant's Child, in the book, Just So Stories. I keep six honest serving men. They taught me all I knew. Their names are what and why and when and how and where and who.